Good morning. God is good all the time. All creatures of God and King, we gather to praise Him. We gather to thank Him for the gift of this day, for the gift of good life, for the gift of good health. So we begin our prayers of thanksgiving. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. In today's gospel, we are reminded of the power of God to heal. The miraculous power of God, we are also reminded of the importance of community. My brothers and sisters in Christ, for the times that we have failed to trust in God, the times that we have not promoted good communities, let us with confidence ask him for his love, compassion, and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. I offer this Mass for all of you and your families. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace so as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. from the 
book of Leviticus, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blot, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean. Since he, since he is in fact unclean, he shall dwell apart, making his adobe outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time. acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you. Glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just exult, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good all the time. time. Did you guys notice that both the first and the second reading were very brief? Did you notice that? Jesse and Crystal, you read those readings? They were very brief. I don't like brief readings. I do not because it's, it's not good for you. Now, I have no option than to follow the new liturgical rule. Did you guys read it? The new liturgical rule that was just published last week? The one that says, when the readings are so brief, the priest has to make it up with a long homily. See what that does to me? Now, I'm under pressure to preach a long homily because the readings were brief. I don't think you will appreciate that. Why is a community important? Why do we have to have community? Why is attaching ourselves to a particular community important? Another way to ask the question would be, Why is isolation not good? The concept of isolationism, why is it bad? I'm not so much into idioms and wise sayings, even though I love them. I don't have a lot of them memorized. I just have a few in Latin. I love the Latin ones. But growing up in West Africa, one of the ones that I still remember, I have to transliterate because I have to say it in English. Sometimes when you say it in another language, the meaning kind of gets lost a little bit. But basically, in English, it says, when you see somebody who is sick and you say, how are you today? How do you feel today? That basically, that is the beginning of the person's recovery. When people come to the person and show their empathy, show their concern, and from the bottom of their hearts, they say, how are you today? That instantly, the person will gradually begin to feel better. Because the person has people around him or her who care. I have to explain it. That reminds me, as I looked at the readings that we heard today, 
of the importance of community. We have to go back to the time to the scripture readings that we heard today we are reading and the time that it happened. Leprosy in those days was worse than what we are going through today. Way worse than what we are going through today with coronavirus. The next thing to leprosy was somebody who is dead back in the day. And because of that, people died not just because of the disease of leprosy. They died of that. But they also died of the isolation that they were put through. I was looking into this. I did a little research about leprosy this week. I found out that back in those days, people with leprosy were not allowed to come six feet. Does that sound familiar? They were not allowed to come six feet to any other human being. And when the wind is blowing, they were not allowed to come 150 feet other human beings, including their family members. How is that possible? They didn't have housing, they didn't have billeting, they didn't have lodging, they didn't have hotels. The only way to achieve that was to ostracize them, to put them in another part of the village. And every once in a while, somebody will go and drop off food drop off food from afar and run away. Does that sound familiar? A little bit of what we are going through today. Drop off the food, no contact, ring the doorbell and disappear. The people suffered not just through physical illness, they suffered through emotional illness because they were ostracized from their families and friends and community. See why community was important then and still remains important today. To be healed was a big deal. When you see somebody with leprosy healed, when they jump up and praise God and they can, this man that was healed in today's gospel could not contain his joy. Even though Jesus said, say nothing to anyone, he could not understand any of that. He was just out of joy. He spread the good news like wildfire. Making it impossible for Jesus to even get around and do his ministry. The man was so happy. Did you notice what Jesus said to him? He said, I will hear you and you've been healed. The leprosy left him immediately, and then Jesus said, go show yourself to the priests. And that is the power of community. Being physically healed was not enough. You couldn't just show up and say, hey, I'm from that community where we've been, the camp where everybody's sick. I've been healed, I feel better now. No, that was not enough. You could have been healed, but the priest have to satisfy, the high priest had to satisfy that indeed he has been healed. We can now welcome him or her back to the community. And that brings the healing to its completion. At that moment, there was holistic healing, physically and emotionally. You can connect back to family and friends and the community. And that was what people missed the most. We've heard people say, oh, the 10 days, the two weeks quarantine of rum, of isolation drove me nuts. Let's take a deep breath here and think about it. It drove us nuts. But we still had Wi-Fi. We still had the internet. We still had our phones. 
we still had computer games. And we still had, yes, free air fan. We still had television. Back in the day, just think back a little bit, they had nothing. To connect with the community, their only means of connection was not Facebook, was not Twitter, and all those ones that I can't even remember right now. Their only means of connection was to sit down, meet with one another, shake hands, and be around the community. Have people to ask them, how are you doing today? How do you feel today? They miss that so much. So for the priest to certify this man and say, indeed, you've been healed, you may go back. He was so happy. What is our community today? How do we connect to our communities? What is the relevance, the importance of, communi of community life? Do we take it seriously? Connecting to a community inspires us. We all have our little small communities. We have our Air Force community, right? We all have our group of friends. We all have different groups that we belong to. I, myself, I belong to a group that I cherish so much. A group that keeps me going. And that is my high school group WhatsApp. We have a group. In that group, people share their joys, people share their achievements, people share their sorrows, people share their bereavements, People share their family joys and sorrows. And yes, every once in a while, we act like teenagers in that group because we all grew up together. I went to a boarding school, and these guys are all boys school that I went to, Catholic school. These guys are all over the world, all over the place. But we have a group that unites us, and every year, those who are home, who are able to make it, we have a class reunion where we can just kick back, relax, and just laugh. Community is important. It inspires us. It's a safe place that we can vent and share humor. A place that people who have the same goals, people who have the same aspirations, can just meet and be who they are. There are all kinds of communities that you and I belong to. As we approach the season of Lent, let us understand that the church community is one of those communities that we can connect. As Catholics, our church community is important. I guess I'm preaching to the choir because you are here every Sunday. All I'm saying is let us make effort in the next six weeks of Lent to continue to find better ways because we can co go from good to better of connecting with our church community, of finding other communities that we can connect to. The man that was healed today was overjoyed because once more, the longing to connect to a community became realistic. He could do it one more time. How about other communities besides our little church community here? Family, friends, 
group of classmates. Maybe there have been people that you disconnected with. You think about them, but you haven't really done anything about it. This coming season of Lent might be a good time to think about the importance of community. Social media is good. It's a blessing that we have it. But it's not the ultimate. One-on-one -on -one remains very important. When was the last time you got a letter, for example, handwritten letter, the old school, from somebody? Did you appreciate that? I'm sure you do. We all do. Have you done it to somebody? Is everything through text and email and, and social media these days? When was the last time we did the old school to grab a piece of paper and take the time to write those words and make out the time to put that little stamp, go to the post office, out of care, compassion and love, and put it in the mail for somebody just to connect back to a community? It was a miracle that the man was healed. I will not stop my homily today without saying or reminding all of us the words that came out of the man's mouth. He said, if you will, you can make me clean. He didn't say, heal me, make me clean, get rid of this leprosy. He said, if you will. Meaning that he abandoned himself to the will of God. Because he asked it the right way, Jesus said, I will, I want to be healed. And instantly there was a miracle. Sometimes we pray the wrong way. We want it from God right now. We forget that we have to ask if you will. Because at the end of the day, it's all God's will. So we thank God for the miracle he performed today and the little, little miracles that we hope for, for ourselves and people that we know and people that we don't know around the world who are suffering right now because of the virus that we continue to ask for that miracle for them. Because the same God that performed the miracle in the gospel today has not changed. It is still the same God that we worship today. It is the same God that wants us to continue to connect with our communities. He's a miracle walking God. He's a miracle walking God. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's a miracle walking God. Let us stand and profess our faith. To be found on the inside cover of our Mr. Lev. Together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God life from life, through God from through God, begotten and not made, some transgressor with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
it proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess for the sins and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us with confidence of our prayers to God. For all who lead the church, that they find new strength in the fervent care, prayer and cheerful service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our country, that they may turn to the Lord in times of trouble and despair, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer evil and injustice, that they find deliverance and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they be restored to health, for their caregivers, that they be sustained by faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of this parish, that we trust in Jesus' desire and power to cleanse our souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions we hold in our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to come together as, as a community to worship you. Father, we ask you to bless all of us that are here today. Bless our families. Whenever we call upon you, continue to answer our prayers. Hear the prayers we have spoken aloud today and the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Grant us this need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. my brothers and sisters in Christ, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May this oblation, O oh Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He raised truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord, through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in our chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Archbishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us stand and pray in the words of Savior taught us, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from our distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, as you say to all of us here today, peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer to one another the sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have not wanted that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, again, thank you for your faith. Thank you for coming together as a community to worship God. This coming Wednesday, as you know, is Ash Wednesday. You don't have to be Catholic to receive the ashes. The military archdiocese gave us some guidelines of the priests who serve in the Department of Defense. Some guidelines on how we do Ash Wednesday because of the reality of the pandemic. Um, so we do a brief mass. We have two masses, 1130 and 1700. Join us. Bring a friend. Let us journey together this coming season of Lent. Um, if you ask me in my lifetime, if there's one year to embrace Lent like no other, it will be this year my own opinion. So let's come together and begin that journey together. In the coming weeks of Lent, you will hear me focus a little bit on what I call Mass 101. Why do we do this at Mass? What does this mean? You'll be hearing a little bit from me in my own limited knowledge and understanding, but in my own experience too as a priest. I'll be sharing during my homilies what I call Mass 101. So join me, join us, let's come together as a community and continue to journey together as people of God. If we don't have fellowship today after Mass, happy holidays, enjoy um, Valentine's Day, enjoy the holiday weekend, and we'll see everybody safe and sound at work on Tuesday. God is good all the time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us join the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And before the final hymn, do we have any new members? New members to the community? If you're new, please, thank you. I almost forgot, but even if you didn't raise your hand, I was going to look at you anyway, okay? <laughs> so it's our tradition to just tell us your names, where you came from, and any other thing you want to say. It's a free country. Please go ahead. Wonderful, from Faith Side. Thank you for being here. St. Eunice. How, how long are you guys going to be deployed here? Four months. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Can we put our hands together for them, please? Any other person? Anybody leaving soon? Last weekend? Okay.